All right, our last notes on the brain are going to talk about this concept of the divided brain, which we've already kind of talked about, but really um, every time I've talked about the brain, I keep saying how there's a left and a um, right portion of that part of the lobe, so the frontal lobe or the occipital lobe or your motor or your sensory cortex. So now we're going to look at how that is connected. Okay, so um, something very important for you to know when we're talking about um, the split brain is this um, neural, uh, like, freeway called the corpus callosum all right now the corpus callosum is this um, it's a band of neurons that connects the left and the right brain so really your brain is like split right down the middle and it communicates uh, with each part it's, it's almost it's really seriously like having two brains like you have a, a right brain and a left brain and the only reason they talk is because of this network that connects them that goes down the middle called the corpus callosum all right. Now, there's been a lot of really interesting studies that have done on split brain um, patients. Now, why would we want to split the brain? Uh, mostly because of uh, these two researchers right here. He actually won a Nobel Prize for his research on split brain. Most um, research on split brain has been because of um, people that have like epileptic seizures of that are really bad, unable to control. One of the like, last resorts to treat epileptic seizures is to cut the corpus callosum to stop the left and the right brain from communicating so that if a seizure, an epileptic seizure starts in one part of the brain, that it doesn't go to the next and then go down to the body. So because of these split brain patients, we've had some really interesting things done. Um, and some things that we've figured out about what part of our brain is control or what portion of our brain is in control of what part of like language or perception. So here I'm gonna actually take you through like um, uh, an activity done with a split brain patient. So here are two pictures. So you have your left visual field and your right visual pitch, um, field. You're looking at uh, um, a pencil and a uh, an apple, okay? So now we're gonna actually trace back what you're looking at into your brain. So your right and your left visual brain overlap a little bit, right? But ultimately this right visual field here, the picture of the apple is going into um, your left eye here and my right, my left visual field is going into my right eye and it goes back into your brain by something called the optic nerve and we'll talk about vision as part of perception in our next unit. But once it goes back to this optic nerve, it crosses at something called the optic chiasm so I have my right apple coming in here and it crosses here and it's going to my left part. And remember we talked about our left brain has to do with speech. And then my, my left visual field is crossing here and going into my right part um, at the optic chiasm. And then it goes to my, my occipital lobe, my visual cortex in the back here. And I have my apple that's on this side, it's now in my left hemisphere, and I have my pencil that's on my right. Now the only reason that those two can communicate is because this corpus callosum goes down the middle, all right? Now, with split brain patients, so we're gonna move this to the, the left-hand side. So with the split brain patients uh, experiment, here's what they did. They put the split brain patient um, and they with this experiment in front of them, but then they'd ask them to do certain things, okay? So uh, here's another, so they'd say, look at the dot. People are looking at the dot and they'd splash up the word heart but it's separated with he on the left side and art on the right side. So they're projected momentarily and think about how that goes back in the brain. So art is gonna to go to my left side of the brain here, right, which is where my, my, my um, language is at. And he is going to my right side of the brain, all right? And then they would say to the split brain patient, which word did you see? So they have to say um, or use the language part and the, the split brain patients would always say art or whatever they saw on the right part of their field. So if they're going back to this example, they would say I saw an apple because they're using the left part of their brain for talking, for language. However, if they were asked to point with your left hand which thing you, what word you saw, they would point to he because my left brain is controlled the motor cortex by my right. And which word did the right brain see? It's all he, all right? So they know that the left brain is the whatever that's all on the right. I'm sorry, that the left hand will um, point to whatever they saw on the right. But then when asked to talk, they would say whatever word they saw on the left hand side, all right? So that is called um, the split brain patient's um, 
uh, activity or the studies done. And you can think about how frustrating that would be to, to know that what you saw or to be saying something different from what you saw, all right, but not being able to communicate with those two parts of the brain. So we call this right lane differences in our intact brain. So what about the 99.9% .9 of us that don't have a split brain? What are some things that our right and left brain are in charge of that we don't know of? There's actually a couple things that researchers know. So they know that we've talked about language a lot already, that language is located on the left-hand side. And that, let me move this to the side so you can see this. But perceptual tasks are actually um, uh, mostly located on the right side of your brain. So perceptual tasks, like what you're um, perceiving from around you. And then your sense of self is also located on the right side of your brain. And these are kind of interesting, um, sense of self, meaning that like looking at a picture of yourself and being able to recognize um, you, or looking at an arm that's put in and um, some people that have damage to the right side of their brain might say, no, that's my husband's arm, or they can't um, identify themselves in a picture. All right, now let's talk about the difference between um, the brain and being a conscious or aware of what's going on around you. This is actually a really interesting phenomenon. So what is the brain versus the mind? Um, is the what your thoughts really uh, what's going on in your brain and um, are we able to read minds that's kind of the thought behind this so the consciousness is really the the collectiveness of everything going on in your brain and really what you're aware of right now is very the the um, the very top of the iceberg of what's going on in your brain. Your consciousness is just what you're aware of. And so there have been some research studies done on consciousness and people that don't have the ability to talk or to communicate. Um, some really interesting things have been shown. So um, using cognitive neuroscience, remember cognitive is talking about thoughts and then brain science. Here is um, some really interesting things. So this is, again, using it brain imaging, so looking at um, positive um, emission tomography, looking at the glucose and the blood flow. This is a patient here, you might want to take some notes on this, a patient who was um, uh, hurt in a car accident and not able, they're in a coma. So they have no communication with doctors or with their family. Um, but they were did these studies where they asked the person who's completely not conscious, so they can't communicate, to think about playing tennis. So without being able to even know if she's awake or, or whatever there she was thinking, they asked her to think about playing tennis. And when you think about playing tennis in a healthy volunteer, there's certain parts of your brain that are activated. So if you like close your eyes and think about playing tennis, like thinking about in the motor cortex, the areas that you'd be using, those same areas were activated in this patient that had no communication with uh, the doctors. And then um, talking about spatially navigating, uh, so I want you to think about walking through your room and turning left and turning right. Same exact areas were activated. So even though the brain or the person was not conscious, they still had this neural activity or the thoughts of their brain that were activated when they were just asked to think about it. And that really brought up this um, idea of, of what exactly is consciousness or can we read minds? There's also some really interesting studies done where um, researchers were able to tell what people were thinking of just by looking at the areas of their brain that were activated or the glucose used or blood flow and so researchers would be able to say they're thinking about moving around and the person would be able to say yes I was thinking about that so I think that's just something interesting to think about um, as we conclude our brain unit on what really makes um, someone conscious or what really defines our brain versus our mind and this last concept would be our last slide is this thought of about dual processing that really you have these two different types of brains your left conscious brain your right intuitive brain and um, how they communicate with each other and we're really going to talk about this dual processing image um, of consciousness and intu intuition when we talk about priming and learning all right so that concludes our notes on the brain uh, our test will cover all of our brain and all of our neurons and neural activity and we'll talk more about that in class.